<笑>ええー、まあ、あっしが壊しているのは、制度だ。How much psychology can you put into a manga? If I were to ask this question to Eichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, his answer would probably be everything, or at least something along that line. In fact, I would argue that the psychology behind Oda's characters is the single biggest reason that his story appeals to such a broad audience up to this day. And I mean that quite literally. Regardless of where you're from or how old you are, you can enjoy the story as a teenager, looking at it through innocent and excited eyes, enjoying the fights, cheering for the characters, and feeling the impact of the major emotional moments of the show. However, a lot of the major characters in the story also have their subtleties that aren't immediately noticeable without a certain amount of personal life experience. Such nuances have been constructed in such a way that they add a subtle but impactful portion of realism and depth that make them more and more relatable throughout the years. These characters especially reflect parts of the human mind and persona that might be picked up upon only by someone who's had a similar experience, or have had enough life experience to consciously, or maybe even unconsciously, pick up on these subtle underlying themes of some of these characters. In other words, psychology is intertwined all throughout One Piece and can be found distinctly for each character. Today, however, I want to explore with you the thematic mind of one person in particular, to examine what impact his theme has on the audience, and to demonstrate how psychology can cleverly be made visible in a medium like manga and anime. So, let's talk about the Purple Tiger. Let's talk about Marine Admiral Fujitora. His blind justice and why it makes him the best developed admiral out of the lot. Fuji Tora, or as he's actually called, Isho, is a broadly built middle aged man that has been recruited into the ranks of the Marines after the time skip. His most prominent features are the deep scars over his eyes that mark the spots where Isho blinded himself with his sword after having witnessed something truly horrific. His character design is dominated by his samurai like appearance, that have made it easy to speculate that he has some connection to Wano. Same as the other admirals, Fujitora's character has been based on a Japanese actor. In Fujitora's case, that is Shintaro Katsu, or more specifically, his role as Satoichi, the blind swordsman. Both characters share a number of distinct similarities. For instance, both carry a Shiko Mizue, a cane sword that they use for both walking and fighting. Both share a love for gambling, a theme that is especially pronounced with Isho, who not only likes to gamble literally, but he also likes to roll the dice when it comes to fights and important decisions. He literally does so when torn between duty and morale, having to decide whether or not to assist Doflamingo against the Straw Hats. We can also see this in his standoff with Law and Doflamingo, when he brings down a meteor without certainty who or what it would hit in the end. They both try to help the people out of their misery as best as they can. And in that sense, both of them are also extremely humble, not taking a lot of pride in themselves. Especially compared to some of his colleagues, Fujitora certainly does not see himself as superior or as a force of authority to others. Notably, while he has enjoyed more screen time than most of the other admirals in the story, there is not much that we know about Isho's past. We do know that he was born somewhere on the Grand Line, possibly Wano, and that at some point in his life he decided to blind himself after being overwhelmed by the cruelty of the world. A possibility in that regard is that this event had something to do with Wano, and maybe the horrific execution of Odin by Orochi and Kaido. Should he actually be from Wano, there would certainly have been enough reasons to explain his painful past. However, whatever the trigger for this tragic decision might have been, we can be sure that Fujitora has suffered through a lot in his life. It is a pain literally made visible to the audience through the scars on his face. They serve as a constant reminder of his suffering and hardship, and the trauma it must have left in his heart. 
Despite being a marine admiral and in that sense an antagonist to Luffy and the Straw Hats, it becomes clear very fast that Isho is not meant to be an enemy to the crew. Right from his introduction, Oda makes it clear that here we're dealing with a very kind and emotional man who does not realize he's even being cheated on by Doflamingo's men during the gambling. His kind heart and the respect that he shows towards our protagonists makes it very easy for us as the audience to empathize with him. When he stops Zoro from attacking Doflamingo, he literally apologizes for his behavior after having been helped by the crew early in the casino. And in general, every major confrontation that Fujitora has over the course of the Dressrosa arc involves some sort of moral and emotional dialogue with his opponents. No matter if it's sharing his concerns over Dressrosa with Sabo, stopping Doflamingo from killing Law, or even his short clash with Luffy. At no point do we perceive him as a true threat, much rather we see him as someone with good intentions who is opposing Luffy and co based on his responsibility as a marine. All this however does not mean in the slightest that Isho is not intimidating. Just the opposite, Oda makes it painfully clear just how powerful the marine is. His skills as a swordsman as well as his powerful gravity devil fruit make it very obvious why Fujitora holds the rank of a marine admiral, despite having been drafted into the marines merely two years ago. But as we all know, power alone only seldomly makes for a fascinating character. And Fujitora in particular is a wonderful example of how real human psychology can be incorporated into a fictional character in a way that creates a distinct and relatable emotional response in an audience. In order to be able to dissect and understand the true power of Isha's personality from a storytelling perspective, we have to start with his wound. However, counterintuitively to the general perception of shonen manga, we're actually not talking about the scars on his face, or any other physical wound Fujitora has suffered over the course of his life. Much rather, these scars serve as a visual representation of a much deeper psychological wound he has been dealt. This wound has its origin in unseen, horrible events the samurai had to suffer through in the past. And no matter what it was that he had to witness, it must have been so terrible that Isho felt no other way to deal with this pain other than to mutilate himself to escape from the cruelty of the world. Grounded in this emotional wound is the fundamental weakness that Oda has chosen for his intricate character. The weakness of a character can be defined as a lie about the world, a perceived false truth if you will, that they wrongfully believe in and thus have to learn to overcome. For Fujitora, this weakness seems to be the belief that piracy is an evil that has to be destroyed in order to bring lasting peace to the world. What this suggests to us is that his past experiences most likely involve the deeds of pirates in one way or another. This weakness subsequently reveals to us the psychological need of the character that determines his future character development. In other words, the need is the solution to the character's weakness that he has to acquire through his own actions. And in Fujitora's case, this clearly is the need to create a more nuanced worldview and letting go of his hatred for pirates in general. However, to turn the journey towards this answer into a thread of story that yields true moral insights and experiences for both the character and the reader alike, the psychological need is usually unknown to the character itself. Thus, at the beginning of the Dressrosa arc, Isho appears to have a very clear image of what is good and what is bad in this world. To mask his emotional wound and avoid dealing with it, he hides it behind a mask. And we can see this very clearly in all of the fights and confrontations that he has, where he lets go of his kind and gentle nature and takes on a much harder and more determined stance. As a result, we, the audience, struggle with him as he struggles between the ideals of the world government, the revolutionaries, Doflamingo and the Straw Hats. His desire after all is to save and protect the people of Dressrosa. And in that sense, the entire Dressrosa arc serves as an overarching representation of what determines good and evil. And Fujitora, who has to figure out who stands for what on this island, 
serves as a sort of personification of the struggle. So, as a result, this makes the Dressrosa story arc his central character development arc as well. And to put it into the broader context of the other admirals, the change he undergoes is basically from Akaino to Aokiji, roughly speaking at least. To explain this analogy, let's take one step back, however. The first step in Isho's character development happens before we ever get to meet him. Joining the marines to fight the evil that has caused him so much pain already is a major step for him. It suggests that despite literally blinding himself to not see any more of it, he at some point has decided to still face all that evil again. How he reached that resolve and determination, we do not know yet. However, it also shows us that Fujitora believed the marines to be a force of good, standing off against the pirates. Thus, Fujitora's worldview at the beginning of the arc comes very close to what we know of Akainu, ideologically at least. However, this black and white view is very quickly challenged by the actions taken by the Straw Hats and Doflamingo, who is affiliated with the world government. As the events progress, we can see Isho struggle more and more with his belief until he finally lets Luffy go. He finally lets go of his mask by admitting to himself that Luffy is actually a kind person. When we reach the end of the arc, we have reached an approach that comes much closer to Aokiji, where Fujitora acts based on his morality rather than his duty. He learns to judge people based on their actions rather than their flag. Thus, he allows Luffy to escape while taking it on himself to abolish the system of the warlords that has caused so much suffering in the world. What then is Fujitora's ideal of blind justice? To unearth that question, we once again have to return to the fundamental theme of the Admirals. Is everything we call evil actually evil? Every one of the admirals has their own answer to this question. And for Fujitora, I would argue that his sense of justice is very closely connected to his character arc that we've just discussed. The first thought when thinking about blind justice, at least for me, is the image of Lady Justice. Often depicted as wearing a blindfold, she represents impartiality. In other words, the ideal that justice should be applied without regard to wealth, power or any other status. This description hits really close to home when we think about Isho's action and ideals. This of course is further supported by the fact that Fujitora is literally blind. He physically cannot discriminate against people based on their appearance. As we can witness over the course of the story, Fujitora decides to serve justice according to people's deeds and not their affiliation. Thus, he increasingly gets into conflict with the world government's ideal of absolute justice. To give you a better idea of his approach to justice, let's look at two impactful moments for his character. The first takes place after his standoff with Doflamingo and Law. After Law is taken out by the warlord, Fujitora steps in to prevent Doflamingo from taking Law's life. The fair and moral thing to do here is to capture Law not execute him. And his job as an admiral is to serve the justice he deserves, not any more or less. He thus protects Law from unjust treatment by Doflamingo. The second instance is his confrontation with Sorrow. Being aware of the kindness that the Straw Hats have shown towards him, he apologizes for standing in his way and openly verbalizes his internal struggle that is building up at this point. What this shows to us is that Fujitora is willing to take responsibility for his actions, even if it means going against Akainu and the Gorosei, for letting Luffy go and bowing to King Riku, and thus exposing the world government's failure. In this case, it's the just thing to do, and Fujitora serves it just as Lady Justice would, blindfolded. Thus, Isho's character truly is psychology made visible, his scars literally represent his ideal of blind justice. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving me a like and some of your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope I could convince you that it might be worth doing so.
welcome on board. I hope to see you around next time, stay curious, and until then, have a wonderful week.